Okay, so this is a simplified version of drag. So imagine I have some ball and that try to draw a diagram. I don't think it really looks great, but it's moving through the air and uh, it's pushing into the air. So there's a backwards pushing force. So let's suppose that I have this ball like that. It's moving this way and there's a force this way, F air, where, and this is in one dimension, so I'm not run, using vectors. So, and this is the X direction. So F air is negative B V. So if the object's moving this way, the air drags that way. And, and as the, the object increases in speed, then the drag force increases by some proportion. Uh, B is some drag force constant. So suppose I have my ball and it starts with an initial velocity V zero, you know, where is it gonna end up? And at position X zero. Okay, so let's do this. This is uh, equal to MA, right? The net force, that's the only force acting on it. In this case, it's horizontal, and that's the only force acting on it. Uh, so I have that. So let's solve for V. So V equals, no, let's solve for A. A equals negative B over MV. Now, I want to get an equation of motion from this, so I can write the acceleration as the rate of change of velocity. So I'm gonna write dv dt equals negative b over m v. Okay, we have a problem. Because I can't integrate this side uh, to find the velocity of the function of time, or I can't integrate because I have a velocity term over there. So let's divide this side by v and multiply this side both and both the sides by v and multiply both sides by dt so i get this dv over v equals negative b over m dt so now i have on this side it just depends on v and this side just depends on t and i can integrate both sides okay now here's where you got to be careful you could just say integrate both sides add a constant I've done that before I want to do this in the in the best way so let's write this as a definite integral I'm gonna say dv over v equals negative b over m dt so what are my limits of integration well I'm gonna start from zero okay so let's start from t equals zero so I'm gonna put actually zero t and then what time do I want to end at? I want to do it for any particular time. So here's where this is kind of confusing. Because imagine I have a function that looks like this. And this is, um, let's say this is x is a function of t. And I want to integrate uh, and get uh, the, let's say this is v. I want to integrate and get uh, v as a function of t no, 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 I'm confusing x as a function of t out of this. So if I integrate, I'm actually adding up all of this area up to some time t. And as I move this, then I get a new t. And, and here's the problem. I'm confusing two t's. I have this t that I am ending up with, my final t, which is a variable because I don't want to put that in there. And then I have the t for adding up these pieces. And Technically, those should not be the same thing. So what I'm going to do is call this t prime. I'm going to call this v prime and that v prime. So those are my integration variables, and they're not the, the variables in my limits of integration. So I'm going to integrate this from 0 to t. And so then I don't have t and t in the limits. That would be kind of weird. And over here, I'm going to start from uh, v0 to v final, whatever that may be. Is that cool? OK. So now I have limits of integration. I can do the whole thing. So if I integrate this side, I have dv prime over v prime. What, what do I take? If I take the derivative, I get 1 over v. And the answer is the natural log of v. And this is actually really nice to do it this way because if I integrate this side, I get the natural log of v uh, minus the natural log of v naught, which I can actually write as the natural log of v over v0. And that's the best way to do that. And on this side, I get the integral of dt prime is going to be t. So I get negative b over m and then t minus 0. So negative b over m. So I'm pretty happy. So look at what we have here. This is important. Since I have the, if I just did, if I didn't do it this way, I would get the natural log of v. 
and you can't do that technically. You can put in a number for that, but the natural log is actually uh, something that you would need to have as a unitless quantity in there, and V over V0 is indeed unitless. But this is my answer for the, what I, but I want to get velocity as a function of time. So I'm going to take uh, E raised to both power sides. So if I take this, the exponential of this side, I get V over V0. And on this side, I get, oh, I'm sorry, T. I get uh, equals E to the negative B T over M. And then I can multiply both sides by V0. And I get V0, V as a function of time equals V0 E to the negative B T over M. Okay, now this also has to be a unitless quantity, so let's just check. If B, what are the units for B up here? Well, this has to be in Newtons, so this would be a uh, meter per second Newton. No, it'd be a Newton meter per second. Right, because then if I multiply that by meters per second, I get newtons. And a newton is a kilogram meter per second squared times seconds over meters. And I get, oh, that's right. And I get uh, kilogram kilograms per second. Uh, but then I divide by the mass. So I get kilograms per second for B. And then I divide by the mass, I get one over seconds, and then I multiply by t, I get the unitless quantity. So that's a good check. Another check is what happens as t gets larger and larger and larger? Well, since this is to the negative power, this number gets smaller and the velocity decreases. So that's what we would expect. Okay, so I'm cool with that. Now let's find a function for the position as a function of time. So let's write down my v as a function of t, v0, e to the negative b t over m. So I can write this velocity as dx dt equals v0 e to the negative b t over m. <clears throat> now I'll multiply both sides by dt and I get dx equals v0 e to the negative b t over m dt. And again, I can integrate both sides. So here I'm, I'm going to again use this prime notation and then go from 0 to t. And here I'll go from x0 to x. So this side of the integration is pretty easy. I get uh, x minus x0 and that's x as a function of t. On this side, I need to integrate this function. So if I integrate, what do I have to integrate? What take the derivative of to get this? Well, it would be uh, v0 and then I'd get negative m over b and then I get the same function e to the negative b um, let's let's write it as t prime for right now over m evaluated at 0 to t so I get x minus x0 now I'm going to put in t so I get negative uh, v0 m over b, they're going to both have that term, and then I get e to the negative b t over m minus this to the 0, which is 1. So let's just write this as x equals x0, and um, I can bring that in, that minus sign in, so I get uh, v0 m over b times 1 minus e to the negative b t over m. And that's my x as a function of t. So what do you think about that? Okay, so there's that's my answer. And I can put in any values of b, m, t. See, I, have, I fully have everything, right? I can get x as a function of time. What? Let's just think about, um, let's do this. Let's do the same problem, but do it numerically. Okay, I'll make that as another video, but I wanna, I wanna plot this, and then I wanna plot the numerical solution of this and do it two ways in Python. So I'll make that as another video, but that's, I think I'll stop there.